It's an exciting morning on this edition of Forever Home. We're gonna be moving in the solid surface countertops today. Our team has already come in and we're started removing all the countertops, getting the uh, temporary ones back out so that the uh, stone crew can come in and begin their work. Let's take you to shore, Torque on a tour and show you what's going on in this edition of Forever Home. Let's get going, here we go. Powder room, gone. Master bathroom top, gone. Kitchen countertop, countertop gone. And the guy's making the magic happen here in the back of the truck in the alley behind the house, getting ready to bring in all of our product and start getting things installed. It's going to be an exciting day. Can't wait to show you the results. Countertops. Back on. So this is part of the process where the experience really comes into play. We've got the countertops in and have started to mount things up, but we've got to get these seams together right. So you start mixing up the different products to try to get the right color mix, to get the pattern that looks right. And, and no seam is ever perfect, but we try to make them disappear as best we can. And so we're starting through that process right now and getting everything clean, getting everything wiped down, getting all the uh, debris and oils and everything else off of the surface so that the adhesives are gonna stick and that we're gonna get the right color graining so that those lines continue through that joint nice and clean and we'll kind of show you that process as things keep rocking here. So now the fun part, we got the vacuum pumps all set up. They're grabbing hold of the two sides of the slab and starting to pull things together and getting all the extra goo cleaned off and then we'll let this set. And then once it's all set, we can take everything apart and start working on the sinks. How long do we leave that set for? About 20, 25 minutes, depending on temperature and stove. And so that's, it, it's both heating it, right? Or is it? It's doing a two-part reaction, yes. Yeah, so it's heating up and basically like a concrete there. Then the vacuum just gives you a way to hold on to everything. The vacuum is holding on to them together and flatten them out, yeah. I like it. <laughs> And when it's all finished, it just disappears. If you look for it, you can find it. And, and that's to be expected. And you gotta know that that's gonna be there, but you run your finger over it, yeah, you might find it. But and of course we've got two different pieces of tile coming together. So the veining isn't exactly, you know, you're gonna, if, you, if you're looking for it, you'll find it. But when it disappears and it doesn't flash and it doesn't shine at you, it's pretty. Next step, we gotta drill for the sink. Sink drill for the faucet. So the next step in this process, what we're gonna be doing is getting the undermount sink set up. We start by putting the adhesive on the top of the rim of the sink. We've got all the tools and equipment here to help hold that sink into place. And we're just gonna clamp that up here temporarily until we can get the sink clips secured. And we'll cut over here to a different clip where I'll show you those holes have already been pre-drilled in the bottom side of the countertop prior to installation. So we've got the adhesive on it, we're gonna lay it up, set it up, and then work on getting our clamp set in. It's gonna hold this all in place while we do the rest of the work. Once we have our clamp in place, then we can work on positioning in the sink, center in the sink, getting exactly where we want it. Once we have it all centered up, lined up, then we can start working on the next steps with the sink clips and uh, the other seal and center places that we need to do to make sure that this is set in and sealed and waterproof and where it's not gonna move. Now we're running into a little bit of a snag with our vent underneath here because this isn't vent out through the roof. We have an air admittance valve underneath the sink, but that's getting in the way of where this needs to be. So we're gonna cut this off for right now. And then once this is installed, we can glue that back down in the lower height where it's not interfering with the sink installation. Now we've already finished the sink installation here in the master. And again, where we set the countertop in, put the backsplash on, and then it's that process of clamping the sinks up under the bottom with the adhesive on it, and then putting our sink clips in. So these are setting up and then we'll uh, put the side splash on last. Slice that off and ready to rock and roll. We can keep going with the sink. So now comes the important part. We start asking the question of how many holes are we gonna drill? And I think we talked about this on a previous video, but just to cover it again, you know, sometimes we get in the kitchens where the kitchen sink and the cabinet and the window are not centered. They don't line up. And as you as you eyeball it down, you know, what is the right answer as far as where should the center line of things go? Now, in this case, everything does pretty much line up. And so the sink is centered in the cabinet, the faucet is centered on the sink, and all of that is centered on the window, and it's going to look beautiful. But there are situations where whoever initially designed the kitchen was not that thoughtful, and we run into challenges trying to figure out, well, what's the right answer? Usually the visual is the window, but every situation is unique, and you really got to take time to look at it. So figuring out how many holes we're doing. And the second question that comes up is the soap dispenser. I really like recommending usually Delta and Moen faucets. They come with the built-in ply tubes that go straight down to your valves, which is phenomenal. And a lot of times they'll also come with the soap dispensers that mount into your sink. Now, if you're getting a brand new countertop, the question's gonna come up, do you wanna drill a hole to put this in? My recommendation is almost always no. Generally speaking, these things last about 12 months and then they die. 
and then you either have to buy a new one and replace it or you have to find a cap to put over this extra hole that you have put into your beautiful solid surface countertop. So my recommendation is typically we skip these. Now, if you have a, an older sink and we're just replacing a faucet and you've already got four holes in there because you used to have the handheld sprayer and you're going to cover the three holes with, this, with the mount with the cover plate, comes with the faucet and you just want to use this to fill that extra hole, okay, fine. But know that sometime, probably within the first year, this is probably going to stop working. So most new faucets that you're going to buy today are going to come with a three hole cover plate for retrofitting over your old sink. Uh, in most cases, if we're doing your solid surface, we're not going to use this unless you really, really like that look. They also come with the normal ring adapter that's just going to go around the bottom of that single hole to put a, put a bushing in there, put a rubber washer in there. And then they come with these self-attached, ready to go supply lines. So we can just run these right into your 3 8 compression valves. And I believe they are set up that if necessary, we could actually potentially cut these shorter. I tend not to do that. I tend to just leave them the length they are and put a, put a coil in them and put them in and ready to rock and roll with them. But in theory, you can pop this red piece off and cut them shorter, put that back on and go to town. And the kitchen is finished. Uh, we have the new countertops in. Guys have all cleaned up and we have finished the plumbing. So everything is up, operational, functional, and we are ready to wash dishes. So absolutely came out beautiful. Next step is going to be uh, tiling our backsplash and that's happening here in another day or two but we've got our hot and our cold water our garbage disposal is hooked back up and she actually has a lot more space down here because of how this has been consolidated now we're uh, gonna give you a lot more storage space down underneath so really happy with how this all came together that part is done we'll take you back and give you the wide shot the other change that you're going to notice is that before with this island it only hung out on this end of things and really wanting to be able to do some nice baking and have lots of prep surface the way this kitchen is designed it's really kind of broken up you've got this small section over here next to the stove a little bit of workspace there to the left of the sink and then a smaller workspace here to the right of the sink but there's no large prep area so by enlarging the island adding 12 inches out here to this right hand side that really gives you a lot more prep space so that when you're working here in the kitchen especially as we go into the holiday season that you've got much more room to spread out as you're doing your baking as you're doing your cooking as you're preparing for family friends and guests we've got the nice tight radius corners on this uh, so you're not going to have any worry about you know bumping any little heads on sharp edges but not so large that you lose that modern clean look that these tight corners do give you so absolutely gorgeous painters coming here in january and it's going to freshen all this up and we're hoping to bring you that footage as well so that you can see the the finished product uh, but this really came out nice let's take you into the master and we'll show you what that looks like. So master is in, uh, mirrors have been ordered but have not shown up yet. So those are coming. We've got the uh, light fixtures finished dressing here, uh, but the undermount sinks are in. All of this has been plumbed and we are ready to rock and roll. We're just leaving the center drawer out so she can reach her hand in to get the drawers out until the pools show up. Uh, the interior designer is gonna be here later this week and it's gonna be deciding exactly where those drawer pool locations are going. So we've got all this ready for and uh, absolutely does everything that it needs to do. So we're excited to see what this looks like when it comes together once all the mirrors are up, the lighting fixtures are up. But really compared with the old look that we had with that yellow, orange, gold, uh, kind of 1990s kitchen bathroom appearance, this is a really modern look and much cleaner and gonna be a wonderful uh, way to enjoy her forever home. Let's take you over to the powder room and show you that side as well. And last but not least, powder room is complete. Vanity's ready to rock. Same thing, we're waiting on the mirror and the new light fixture, and we've got some painting to be done. Uh, but she is plumbed, operational, ready to rock and roll, and that completes this phase of this project for her. Uh, like I said, next step is going to be getting the tile backsplash in, and uh, then I believe carpet's coming on Saturday, and we have a couple other phases and steps to get through, but the solid surface addition portion of this now complete. So if you're working on your forever home and you'd like to bring that up to date to where you want it, where you're going to enjoy it for the next 10, 15, 20 years, whatever it may be, give our team a call. There's nothing that we don't do. Roofing, siding, windows, doors, decks, anything on the interior of your home, renovate your kitchen, your master bathroom, finish your basement for you, plumbing, electrical, drywall, spackle, paint, build an addition, a custom dream home, a garage, whatever it is that we can help you with. Take a picture of your problem, send it to us right here on our Facebook page. Click that contact us button there at the top. Our team will be happy to assist you. If you prefer to call by phone, we have a dedicated office that's standing by to answer your calls weekdays, 9 30 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon at 484 748 0008. Choose option two for Cope Built, your full service construction and renovation company, and extension two for new projects. Cope Built is a Pennsylvania home improvement contractor number 88078 and licensed in Newcastle County, Delaware 10490. Remember, when it's too hard for everybody else, 
it's just right for us. So if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you like this video, hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, so you get updated on all of our video tips that are gonna help you as you're interviewing contractors to work on your forever home to know who knows what they're talking about and who's just blowing smoke. This is Drew in beautiful Avondale, Pennsylvania. Remember, we're finished with it. You're gonna be proud to say it's not just done. It was coat built. We'll catch you in the next edition of Forever Home. Bye for now.